Now, today's topic of discussion is creating employment for the future. We all know about unemployment and the effect that that has on the world. So how do we go about reshaping the current system to create a freer and fairer society? But just to bring things back to employment, which is obviously what we're, what we're talking about, because there's so many subjects we could get into. Um, um, I'm thinking we've, we've talked about security, but what about actual job security when it comes to people's employment, what you do for a living? And I'm thinking particularly with aspects of technology, which we've already touched on, whether it's, you know, AI coming in and... Well, how do we how do we tackle sort of that because there's some positives no doubt with technology opening up employment i think for the future but also is that gonna sometimes i think about i went and visited the mini factory a couple of years ago which was fascinating but it was a lot of robots doing great things and people standing around making sure that the robots did the right thing now i'm not sure if that constitutes real meaningful employment i don't know it's sort of that thing of like humans just watching what robots are doing <laughs> it's i really believe we're talking about retraining on a on a on a huge huge scale it's about the different kinds of jobs you know a whole notion of industries and what those industries look like and the kinds of skills that we have needed previously to work in those particular sectors that has completely changed so we need to look very differently at, at, at how we're training, what we're training, and what those new careers look like. Yeah. You know, we, we, need to, we need a complete overhaul. And what do they look like? What are these new careers? Well, you know, I mentioned green jobs, sustainability. This is a, it's a huge area, but also technology. And I come back to, you know, creativity, innovation, problem solving. Um, you know, who are the problem solvers of the future? Who are the people who are going to be able to deliver those solutions? The other thing that I think is really interesting, there's a, a fascinating uh, project called Project Drawdown um, by Paul Hawkin, an economist, um, ecologist, environmentalist. I'm a very big fan of Paul's work. And ultimately, what's been documented is that we have all of the solutions to tackle the climate crisis. We have the solutions. What we need to be doing is we need to scale them up. We need to deliver them. So we have everything we need, but we do need the skills to be able to deliver those solutions. So I think there is something about that kind of that ability to solve problems, to be able to scale up what we already have, to look at the resources and the ideas and the innovations that we already have and to apply them, to be able to apply them. So to me, it's about retraining on a, on a, on a huge scale. Let, let me take it. I'm not arguing with that, but fundamentally, um, but, but let me tell you a story about something that happened to me in my business life, which hopefully will illustrate what I'm trying to say. So um, we employed 100,000 people a year, a lot of temporary labour. We employed a lot of people. Uh, and we lo employed a lot of carers, people who were, who were caring in care homes. Um, and uh, in many cases, they'd sleep, with, they'd sleep in the care home overnight with, with a patient. Um, and the law had always been interpreted as meaning that, that, that when a worker was asleep, you didn't need to pay them the minimum wage. That's we, we, and then suddenly, about 15 years ago, um, case law changed, and, and, and um, a judge, in fact, it was Lord Neuberg as part of a court of appeal decision, decided um, that sleeping workers should be paid a living wage, minimum wage. Um, again, this is important in the narrative. So, so what, so, and this was a nightmare because if you're paying somebody who's asleep the minimum wage, you might as well have them awake because there's no advantage, you pay the same. Anyway, it wasn't properly thought through. Um, but what happened was the court had made a decision without referring to, to Hansel, which is then the story. They'd actually based it based on the law. And the logic was something like, um, well, the guy can't leave the hospital, or can't leave the care home. He's constrained in what he can do. Therefore, he's, he's effectively limited. Therefore, we should be able to get paid. Mm. So you, there's all kinds of stories that you can create. But I digress too far. But what I, I went to the, the top QC in the country, and he showed me the case law. And he said, Philip, 
everything was right until you got to a point where a single fork, it went wrong. And then every single case law since then is wrong. So what, what, what I'm explaining that for is because we made forks in the past, big forks about money, about banking, about, and, and unfortunately, most of them are wrong. There's no way that it's all the times that things we're talking about are right. But unless we go back to the basics and revisit some of those forks and say, were, so for example, all the, the banking jobs, the, the derivatives, the trillions of, of crazy amounts of debt all linked to a system which, which means that we have these traders doing completely futile jobs, making billions of pounds mm -hmm. and effectively destroying the world. And so, for example, you, you talked about um, the environment. No, you can't protect the environment because we're over-consuming, as you know. We're, and therefore, until we have a system which actually reduces over-consumption, we're never going to be able to sort the, the, the planets out anyway. So what I'm saying is we have to revisit these very basic decisions and build from the ground upwards from the concepts of the Bible. Again, it sounds crazy, but you can. And then you start to address the issues that you raise in a systematic way, but it only will happen in a rigorous way if you start looking at is profit right, is banking right, is lending right, all of these things, they've all got to be questioned. It sounds amusing, but it's not. It's, it, you, you can do it by going back to the beginning. Yeah, interesting. It's an interesting concept. It's a really interesting concept. And I think, you know, for me, I, I, I guess I describe things in terms of, you know, the fundamentals of kind of human existence, yes. which, you know, you would talk about in a, in a biblical context. Yes. And, you know, for me, it's very much about coming back to what makes us human, yes. what do we need as humans, what, um, what really matters in the world. And I think, you know, one of the things that was quite interesting was during the pandemic, a lot of us came back to that kind of those basic fundamentals. We took time, didn't we? The work, we had to stop. You know, there were lockdowns. Absolutely, Everything yeah. had to kind of stop and shut down. And that gave us the opportunity yeah. to be able to reassess our lives, to really think about what really was important, what's really important, what really matters yes. in this world. And how we do things. You know, and, and do I really need yeah. to be buying, you know, right. 1,500 pounds worth of whatever it is, you know, every, <laughs> do I really need that? Is that something that really matters? Does that bring any meaning to my life? And, and so, I, you know, I, I think we are in very, very, very interesting times. Yes. Things are really being kind of turned upside down. Personally, you know, I am, I am very much an optimist. You probably have already sensed that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yes, I was, I was a lot more hopeful during the pandemic that we wouldn't go back to business yeah. as usual. Yes. I yeah. really hoped, we it felt that we had this opportunity. Yeah. I do feel that I have seen some positive changes since the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we've gone completely back to business as usual. But, you know, there have been, you know, there are some aspects of, 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 of life that has, has reverted. Well, it's quite interesting because obviously during the pandemic, a lot of people were forced to work from home and that's been a massive that's shift true. hasn't it that's the working from home and even you know the zoom meetings that we can now have you know where we can connect even conferences that were conducted all online and and that's still now sort of happening and i'm thinking some of these big conferences where you'd have people traveling for example all over the world to go and visit them are being done online the impact on the environment, well, we're not all jumping on airplanes and going somewhere. Yeah. So there, there, there have been changes that have stuck and positives. You know, my life Important. as well. I mean, there's no question my life has completely changed over that mm. period. The, the biblical study I could not have done without Zoom. I wouldn't have thought about Zoom. Now suddenly the world is a small place mm. and you can get hop on a call with anybody anywhere in the world, mm. which is mind blowing. We, we were never, it wasn't there. We didn't, no, none of us thought about it. it. We didn't think about Absolutely. it. Well, I think that's a lovely wrap up really, Benita, actually, um, and, and leaving it on positivity. I think that's crucial. It's been a really, really interesting discussion. Yes, we, of course, have had the overall topic of employment, but it's been great because we've actually had quite a few other things and elements coming in, which has been really good. So thank you so much for joining thank us. You. For this discussion. Thank you. Thanks as always to Philip and thank you for watching. Do remember to hit the subscribe button, very important, and hopefully we'll get those views up next time we see you as well. Until that next time, take care. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.